We're going to try running AlphaFold in order to predict an atomic model as a first step in building a structure into a cryo-EM map. So let, let's load the map. It's from the EMDB. Um, its ID is, uh, let's see, 23883. So I'll say open 23883 from EMDB. So this is a transmembrane protein. Let me raise the threshold level. So you see uh, a domain at the top, that's the transmembrane protein, and it has an antibody or fragment antibody bound at the bottom. Uh, this protein we're looking at that um, transports omega-3 fatty acids across the blood-brain barrier. Uh, and it was published um, I believe in Nature just recently, in the last few months. It's a three angstrom resolution map. And the transporter, uh, this transmembrane protein, is from chicken. So we want to build an atomic model into the map. And uh, we need, or well, we're going to try to find a starting structure. And we're going to try to use AlphaFold. So let's bring up a tool uh, for looking at st structures in the AlphaFold database. This is a new tool in Chimera X. It's under structure prediction, tools, structure prediction, alpha fold, you need a September version, September 2021 or newer version of Chimera X, or otherwise that tool won't be there. Uh, so I brought up this panel and I can, um, I can now paste in here the sequence of the protein, um, so of this transporter protein. So I have the sequence in a web browser. Let me get that and I'll copy that and we'll just paste it in. Now the AlphaFold tool can do a number of things. It can fetch the very best matching structure in the AlphaFold database of pre-computed structures, or it can search and find um, all of the similar structures or many of the, the best scoring similar structures. Let's do the search option. So we'll do that. Um, there are probably some messages in the log here about this search. Let me see what the log says. Um, so it's doing a sequence-based search with uh, this chicken sequence. And, okay, it's, pr it's produced the, the uh, results. Let's see, um, things are a little crowded. Let me they appear down here. Let me stack it on top of my log panel. And we'll scroll down. And it shows the, the hits it found in the AlphaFold database. The AlphaFold database is ho hosted at the Protein Data Bank, and it has uh, it has protein structures from 21 different organisms: human, rat, mouse, E. coli, um, Arabidopsis, uh, many of many of the model system organisms. But it does not have chicken. Uh, so we look here, we see the hits. Uh, we have a hit in rat and human, and in um, uh, Daniel Rario, zebrafish, uh, mouse. Okay, so we can look at these structures, um, and those might serve as a starting point. So let me, if I just click on this link uh, for rat, we'll get the transporter homolog for rat. And here it's off, it appeared, but it's off out of view. Okay, so let me hide my map. And then we can look at this. The color coding on this alpha fold structures are blue where it's very confident that it has the right structure and yellow less confident and red less still less confident. Okay. So we could fetch other of these structures. If I um, go here, we could fetch, I can click on the human one and we'll fetch the human structure, uh, the zebrafish structure. And we see they're just stacked up here, and they're they're quite similar to each other. Uh, some some differences. Um, now the problem is these all have different sequences. Um, uh, let's see how different a sequence. As I loaded these, some messages appeared in the log. Let me show you the log panel. So here it says uh, for this zebrafish sequence uh, structure we just loaded. Um, the alpha fold model for zebrafish is 69% identical to the chicken sequence and covers 94% of the chicken sequence. And if I scroll back, 
Uh, here was the human one, 75% identical with 97% coverage. And the, the rat one, 74% identical with 98% coverage. Now, the trouble is we want, uh, uh, we want to make a model that's exactly the chicken sequence. Um, so one approach to doing that is to run alpha fold on exactly this chicken sequence. So let, let's do that. Um, I think what we'll do, um, let's close these, these three atomic structures just to clean things up a little bit. I'll close those, show our map again. Let's see, let's center on that. And let's go back to the alpha fold to panel here. We've got our sequence, and this predict button will run alpha fold. So I predict, pre press the predict button, and it brings up this panel. Okay, so to run alpha fold, it requires, it's, alpha fold is a machine learning program. It has a neural net. It, it uses a GPU graphics processor. It has to be an NVIDIA graphics processor because it uses CUDA. Uh, uh, GPU computing library only available on NVIDIA. So we're going to, I'm on a Mac. We're going to have to do this on another machine. And this Chimerix tool does it on Google servers. Uh, Google has virtual uh, servers that are available for free if you have a Google account that have GPUs. So the first thing I have to sign into Google, I only have to do this once. Uh, just like when you sign into your web browser, uh, next time you bring up your web browser, you'll still be signed into Google. So let's see, so I'll click sign in, I'll choose my account, and this is just a browser window within Chimera X. So I'm going to just sign in like I would normally sign in in a browser. And, um, and now this message coming up is because we're trying to run some code on Google's uh, server, cloud server. And this code comes from Chimera X, and it's going to run AlphaFold. So it's just warning you the code was not from Google. So we'll click Run Anywhere. A anyway, that was just a security warning. And now what it's going to do is uh, on that Google machine, it's going to install some software. Uh, you and what we see here appearing here is a log. It says Installing Hummer. That's a multiple sequence alignment program. Um, the alpha fold prediction uses a multiple sequence alignment. Uh, it's now installing alpha fold. Then it's going to install OpenMM, which is an energy minimization program. And then it's going to run this on the sequence up here, which is the sequence of our uh, chicken transporter protein. Now, this can take hours, um, anywhere from one to three hours. It depends on the length of the sequence. Here it says our sequence is length 528. Um, so we're not going to wait for that. Um, I've run this previously. And so let me bring up the um, what this what this panel looks like after the run has completed. Let's see, where is it here? Uh, da, 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 da. Is it? Yeah, here we go. Okay, so this is just an image of the same panel. Um, at the bottom, I see it says one hour and 47 minutes. So it took one hour and 47 minutes to predict the structure. And we see more the, what, it, what the log will show after it's done. So um, it, it did these installations we just discussed. It then searched the chicken sequence against about um, 100 million sequences, a large number of sequences, 150 gigabytes of sequences. That took about a half hour. Um, then it computed three models using the the AlphaFold neural network. Um, five, the five different five different models use slightly different neural network parameters, five sets of parameters that the AlphaFold was trained on. And then it takes the best scoring model and it energy minimizes that with OpenMM. Okay, and then it loads automatically into Chimera X. So let me, since we're not gonna wait for that, go back here, let me close this, and I'm gonna just load that um, best fitting structure. So uh, let's see. Yeah, I'll show you where it is. It's, it ends up under the downloads directory under Chimera X. This is where Chimera X fetches lots of uh, data from databases, and then under AlphaFold and prediction 13. 
I've made 12 previous predictions of other structures. So I go to prediction 13, best model. All right. So it's not aligned with a map, of course, because it doesn't know anything about the map. But in blue, there is our model predicted from AlphaFold. So let's fit it into the map now. I'll just move it by hand and then do a little local optimization of the fit. So to move it by hand, I'm going to just um, control click to select. I, I can just select one of the residues. There's a little green outline. And then on the right mouse mode, I'll choose move model. And then if I have a three button mouse, I can use the right mouse button on my Mac. I'm going to hold the option key and just drag it over to my map to the map and try to get it to fit reasonably well. Okay, this is going to be a little bit tricky, and what would help is if I could see the alpha helices in the map. But because the map is at three angstroms resolution, it's sort of too much detail. So I want to, I'm going to make a slightly lower resolution version of the map where I can see the alpha helices clearly. I'll do that with some Gaussian smoothing. I'll say volume, this is just a type command into Comerix, volume Gaussian, number one, the name of, that's the model number of the map, and standard deviation two, that's the width of this Gaussian that corresponds the, to a resolution about four times bigger, like eight angstroms resolution. So let's do that. Um, and there we go. The, there is the map being shown at a very low contour level. I'm going to hide our alpha or close our alpha fold tool here because we don't need that anymore. So I can make this a little bigger, raise the threshold level. Okay. So you see now, uh, I've got, the, I can see the helices clearly in this map. And I'm going to try to align my atomic structure. Um, there's, there's one helix that's especially long here in the bundle. I'm going to use that helix as a guide. Just tell you the trickery I'm using to, to make this. Um, so when I use this mouse mode, it just translates left and right. But of course, I need to rotate it too. And so if I hold the shift key, with the right mouse or with the option key, uh, then I can rotate it as well. And I see my long helix here. And I'm going to move that over. So there's a little bit of, of uh, fiddling around here. And I'm just going to get it somewhat close. This is probably close enough. Maybe I'll make it a little better. Okay. There we go. And then I'm going to optimize this fit. Uh, with another tool, tools, vol uh, volume data, fit in map, and it says fit the best model in. Uh, this is the original high resolution map. I'm going to fit it into the lower resolution smooth map. Might get a um, avoid getting stuck, um, which might happen if we do it with a full resolution. And I'll click fit. There we go. And you see these alpha helices of our predicted structure. Uh, line up remarkably well with the with the map. Let's um, let's compare this to um, the final structure that the authors of this map deposited uh, just recently, just to see how good our initial structure is. Um, so that uh, PDB is seven MJS. So I'll say open seven MJS. There we go, and let's hide our map. And we'll take a look here. And if you can see, it's just remarkable how good the match is of the transmembrane alpha helices. Up when you get into some of these loops um, that are outside the membrane, it's not quite right, but it's, it's really close. Just amazing. Um, by comparison, if we looked at, the, say, that rat structure or the human structure, those homologs that were available, they actually don't match um, the density very well. Let's take one a quick look at that. Um, I'm going to bring back our alpha fold. To, I shouldn't have closed that that st structure, uh, but I'll bring back alpha fold, and we'll um, we'll say um, um, use um, 7MJS chain X. Okay. We'll use the actual um, deposited cryo-EM structure, the sequence from that, okay? Uh, instead of pasting in the sequence again, I could use the pasted in one. And I'll press the fetch button, which will just fetch the best match from the AlphaFold database. Uh, that was rat or human 
uh, let's see. Okay, it says human here. It loaded the human version. And l let's hide our uh, best model. Let's make this a little simpler. And if you see here, um, here maybe if I color, let me color um, this human uh, homolog. You can see that uh, while some of the helices match very well, um, some, let's see, over here on the left, a bunch of them uh, deviate. It looks like a whole set of helices is tilted at a different angle in this human structure. And the rat structure and zebrafish structure also are quite a bit different than the chicken structure. So running AlphaFold to do the prediction, uh, which gave us the, the excellent agreement, is... Um, is, is uh, you know, does a lot better job of getting actually the correct structure. Okay, uh, one more thing I want to say about this alpha fold. I ran it um, um, with a service called um, Google Colab Pro. I didn't use the free version. The free version is limited to a couple hours of use per day. And when one of these jobs takes a, almost a couple hours to run, uh, you could easily run out of time. So I pay $10 a month to Google for their service called Colab Pro, um, which just gets me, uh, I think, up to 12 hours per day use. So if you use AlphaFold a lot uh, through Chimera X at the Google servers, it might be interesting uh, to look into that. Uh, okay, thanks for listening.